Prostate cancer survivor and fire chief Peter Mead from Great Neck knows what it's like to save a life in a fire. Now he's become a spokesman saving lives by encouraging people to get screened for cancer. One of the organizations he supports is the Kidney and Urology Foundation, which is holding its fifth annual Hatton Author Luncheon on June 7th at the Woodlands Mansion in Woodbury. Several celebrity authors will speak, including Mob Live star Karen Gravano, radio personality cousin Brucey, sports writer Mike Shalin, and Long Island author Carrie Ann Flanagan Broski. Mead recently shared with us his remarkable life story and why this organization is so important to him. We had a nursery school fire here many years ago, and uh, I, I personally, with, with one other firefighter, rescued four children from that building, and they would certainly have died. There's no doubt in my mind, and I remember carrying them out. Uh, I had two, I had one under each arm. There were four-year-olds, and um, I remember that day. It was eight degrees. Everything was ice, and I remember it like it was yesterday. There's no greater feeling than getting up in the morning and looking in the mirror and knowing that you saved someone's life, and that's the reward that you get from this job, and I've had that feeling every day for, for 40 years. It's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. I often, I often think... There's two young men, or not young men anymore, there's two, there's two men out there living their lives, raising their families who are alive because of something I did, because I was willing to risk my own life to save theirs. But Mead's own life story changed dramatically when he was diagnosed with prostate cancer in June of 2005. I grew up here in Great Neck, and uh, when I was 17 years old, I enlisted in the Marine Corps. I served three years in the Marine Corps, during which um, I served on active duty in the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. So when I was released from active duty in the Marine Corps, I, I joined this fire department. And then I belonged here since uh, 1966. I've been a member here for 46 years. And uh, during the time, I was also a biker. I spent some time uh, riding around on the chopped Harley Davidson. So I've seen and done a lot. And I, I always thought I was a pretty tough guy. And then when I came up against uh, cancer, not so much, not so tough as I thought. It's not a battle that you can fight alone. You know, I've been in a lot of bar fights and a lot of street brawls, but this one, uh, you can't turn around and say, uh, well, my buddy's going to take care of me because your buddy doesn't know what you're going through. And um, fortunately, I'm, I'm blessed with, I married late. I married at 38. I have, uh, I have two wonderful children, grown children, and um, a great wife, very, very supportive. And they've been a, they've been a wonderful support team for uh, my illnesses. And it was pretty aggressive on the Gleason scale which is zero to nine, I was an eight. So it was pretty serious stuff, not something that we could afford to wait and see. Seven years later, Mead is still being treated, but it hasn't stopped his life or his spirit. Now he speaks out to encourage others to get regular checkups for cancer. Early intervention on the part of uh, any individual who feels that they might have a problem, if they seek early intervention, prostate cancer is almost 100% curable. If you do take that wait and see attitude, you're waiting to see how bad it gets, not how much better it gets. It is, it's, like a, it's like a building that's on fire. Someone calls this firehouse and says, I have a little fire in my kitchen. Well, it's only a little fire in your kitchen while you're standing there looking at it. By the time we get there, it's a slightly bigger fire in your kitchen. If you don't call us, you don't have a house. It's that simple. And it's that way with these, with these diseases of the, uh, of the kidneys and the prostate, all the urological diseases. They don't get better on their own. They require intervention. They require intervention of someone that knows how to deal with these problems. And one of the areas that, that uh, you can look to is the Kidney and Urology Foundation, where they will put you in touch with somebody who can help you with your problem if you don't know where to turn. Mead was recently recognized by the Kidney and Urology Foundation for his work as a spokesman. The odds are that, uh, that one in six men will develop prostate cancer. If you live long enough, um, everybody will develop some type of a prostate irregularity, either an enlargement or, or prostate cancer. So that's my advice is get it checked, stay on top of it, and be aware. And then uh, I recently became aware of the uh, Kidney and Urology Foundation because I was honored by them as one of their 25 champions for a cure. Quite an honor. It was quite a, quite a moving ceremony, and I learned a great deal about the Kidney and Urology Foundation and the good work that they do. They are very, very um, involved in ensuring that folks who have these kinds of difficulties get the care they need and uh, are able to obtain the follow-up care. They're very, very helpful in helping folks stay on top of it. It's a very worthy organization, and I encourage folks to uh, throw a few bucks their way. I know money's tight. Everybody's, uh, 
everybody's got a, got a situation, but do without a couple of slices of pizza and throw some money to them. Mead says although it's been challenging, he's determined not to let the disease run his life. It, it's a kind of a cliche to say that attitude weighs heavily in, in these events, but attitude is one of the things that I think that has helped me the most. Maintain a positive attitude. I intend to win. Um, my, my battle right now is to try to live forever one day at a time, and so far so good. But I can beat this. And anyone who comes in with the attitude that they can beat this can and will. I go sometimes for chemo and I see folks who, I look in their eyes, they've quit. They've given up. And I want to scream at them, don't you understand how precious and valuable this wonderful, wonderful life is? I, th this month I'm going to graduate, <clears throat> I'm going to graduate from college. Uh, when I retired, I said, I've, I've always wanted a college degree. I had to put it off because of career concerns. And I, then I was in the, in the emergency response business. You couldn't schedule college. There was no way to do it. So when I retired, I said, I set my sights on getting a, a Bachelor of Science. And I complete studies this week. And I'll graduate in June with a, with a BS in the Community and Human Services with a concentration in emergency management. So uh, I made that my business. And my son said, gee, Dad, you're going to be almost 70 when you graduate. I said, Brian, I'll be almost 70 whether I do it or not. So that's my attitude is to uh, stay, stay active. Uh, let the disease play its role in your life, but don't let it take over your life. Uh, someone said to me recently, you know, I, I just heard that, that you had cancer at some time. I said, oh, no, I have it now. And they went, what? I said, well, I have it now. But, you know, I, I deal with that. I deal with that. And I, I don't need... I don't need you to share in it. If you're aware of it, that's great. And if, you, and if you think a nice thought and keep a happy thought for me or say a prayer, that's great too. But don't let that detract from your life because it certainly isn't detracting from mine. Mead says his whole experience has given him a new outlook which he is eager to share with others facing the same situation. And I want people to, to en enjoy life because what a gift. What a gift we've been given. And, and to misuse or abuse that gift is uh, it's sinful. And, and where, where does that leave uh, my family if I quit, if I give up and say, you know, enough is enough and, I, and this thing is getting me and, and be down. You know, you can, you can be down anytime, but if you can be up and, and full of spirit, you lift everyone around you. And that in turn enables them to continue to lift your spirits and to keep you, and to keep you happy and keep you on focus. And that's something that I rely on day to day. For more information about the Hatton Author Luncheon and to find out how you can get tickets, you can check out the website kidneyurology.org. In Great Neck, Chris Kalor reporting.